All right, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the last session of this lecture series for this year. We will continue after our break, but uh, for this uh, year, we have two colleagues from Italy uh, and uh, they will talk to us about the value and differences to promote well-being and inclusion. You will hear a lot about this later. Um, as usual, I would like to uh, go back to last week and uh, just remind you of the talk by Mayana Dahlheim from Duisburg Essen and um, uh, how she started out from the policy perspective, from her role as a sort of um, 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 you know, diversity officer in her university, and uh, then broadened her perspective to a very interesting question. And I think that's really worth um, uh, thinking about how we um, address diversion and inclusion in the uh, in a very US American specific context this is a concept that has traveled to us I mean and there is um, there's a theory about traveling concepts by Mike Baal and uh, also Doris Bachmann uh, Medic how different concepts uh, sort of travel globally but then show national, regional, geographical, uh, historical specifics. And I think it's very interesting when we when we talk about diversion and inclusion, uh, diversity and inclusion, um, how we kind of bring back this American concept with us. It is in the language, of course, um, and it's also in, in different formats. I don't know if you ever thought about why we actually call this a brown bag lecture series. You know, what does that mean? That it doesn't actually mean a lot to us in a German speaking context. It might be different in an Italian speaking context. But it is, of course, because we brought it from an American context, from an English speaking context, um, where you have your lunch, <laughs> eating, when you eat your lunch out of a brown bag. And um, the, uh, linked to our topic, uh, it is it represents the aim to, um, you know, to have important and uh, social events, not after hours, not after four o'clock, not after six o'clock, because this has become family time at universities. So it's already touching upon uh, a topic of diversity and uh, it, it brings with it a new format that we meet over lunch. Still, actually, not a reason to call this a brown bag lecture because we don't eat our lunch out of brown bags. We could have it as a, as a schnitzel lecture or a Kaiserschmarrn lecture or uh, whatever the specifics are. But just to show you this idea of a traveling concept, and I think um, diversity and inclusion is also such a traveling concept. And when we think about the language we use, you know, just think about the terms of like wokeness or cancel culture, we find it actually very tricky to translate them. So um, this this was also the, the theoretical and research perspective that Mayana pointed out, and I thought that was very interesting and well worth looking into. Today, we're going to, we might actually address this of, uh, and, uh, you know, ask questions about the Italian context of our topic. But before we do that, Dirk will introduce both speakers to us, and then we will listen to their lecture. Yes, thank you, Silke, and welcome also from my side, as always. It's good to have you here, back again to our Aurora Brown Bag Lecture Series. I mean, we don't know how many of you have a brown bag with you to have your lunch right now while we are talking here um, in the virtual classroom. Anyway, uh, so it's a pleasure to have uh, two colleagues again from uh, the University of Naples, Federico Secondo. We already met two of them earlier. Uh, in our uh, program, and this time it's uh, Maura Striano and Annalisa Amodeo. Welcome um, to our lecture series here. Um, they are both professors at um, the University of Naples, Federico uh, Secondo. Uh, Annalisa Amodeo is in clinical psychology, and um, Maura Striano is a professor of um, education. Um, they have been both involved in many different projects, just to name a few. Mora, for example, is um, the coordinator of the PhD course in psychological and pedagogical sciences at the University of Naples. She's also the vice president and member of the executive board of the International Council for Philosophical Inquiry uh, with Children. Um, and. Um, has been the coordinator of the EU Comenius Project Peace Philosophical Inquiry to Advance Cosmopolitan 
uh, engagement. And Annalisa Amodeo has also been involved in many different national and transnational uh, projects among them. For example, um, she was the PI uh, of a European project, Hermes Linking Network to Fight Sexual and Gender Stigma, um, and was also a coordinating partner of uh, the project Empowering LGT Young People Against Violence. Uh, so you can also see in which uh, direction this goes um, in terms of, you know, what the topics and themes are they are uh, interested in. And today there are our guests here um, as uh, members um, of uh, SYDAPC, a center um, at the University of Naples, and they will tell us more about that. And uh, at SYDAPC, there is a section um, focusing on anti-discrimination and cultures of difference. And this is what they will tell us about, about their work at Synapse and this uh, anti-discrimination and difference uh, section. So very warm welcome again from our side. Uh, and uh, the floor is yours. I think Annalisa is about to start. Thank you. Welcome everyone. And, uh, I'm an uh, Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology and uh, I'm a Coordinator of uh, Anti-Discrimination <coughs> and Culture of Differences uh, of Synapse Center. Synapse is the center of the University of Naples Federico II that promotes inclusion and social participation of students. All students, but in particular students with uh, disabilities, underachievers, and victims of ethnic, sexual, and gender stigma. Synapse is uh, in uh, these years is implemented a project European co-founding European Commission, uh, in particular Xenia project. Xenia, in Xenia, we are developing an innovative higher education institution inclusiveness index to map and evaluate how higher education institutions are inclusive, scoring them against a set of objective indicators and to gauge to perception of students and staff <coughs> about inclusion of the higher education institution. Uh, I'm uh, moved and uh, probably my voice uh, is uh, quivering because um, this lesson, this event is uh, uh, very important because it represents the great opportunity to share our project, our ideas and what we think about inclusion in higher education institution. For us, the inclusion is the participation, the collaboration between all components of our system to create a safety, a beautiful institution. Nothing must fall behind. Nothing must feel or lives on the borders of university. There is not someone excluded from the rest of university, never, for no reasons. The exclusion depends on ideological and cultural system of our context. Victims are students with temporary or chronic disabilities or discriminated because uh, their uh, ethnic, uh, racial, uh, religious, sexual, gender identities, or because uh, they are poor. We must collaborate to promote well-being. The university, uh, like any other educational institution, can be considered as a community with uh, a level of psychological well-being of its members and by a social climate that can be stressful or so supportive. 
But are we sure that our universities promote full expression, growth and development of all individuals? Research shows that generally higher education institutions are hostile environments for LGB, lesbian, gay, bisexual people and T, G, N, C, transgender and gender non-conforming people, students, due to sexism, machism, homophobia and heterosexism. While a number of studies have examined blatant victimization among students, little attention has been given to LGB microaggressions that seems to be more prevalent on campuses than blatant forms. So such clever forms that shape the academic experiences frequently include environmental slides that communicate hostile and um, uh, derogatory messages about one's sexual minority status. The evidence suggests that they have deleterious effects on the entire academic community, entire academic. Regardless of gender identity, expression identity, and sexual orientation. A context in which even one identity has no place because of its own particularities and differences is a place where no one can feel truly safe and welcome. Consistently with the minority stress theory of uh, Mayer, studies have suggested that sexual, sexual minorities perceive the campus climate as less inviting or chillier than their peers. Because of their sexual identity, gender identity or and expression, gender expression. Promoting gender equality within academic institution is one of the actions that can cont contribute to improve everyone's perception of the academic experience, especially in context such as the south of Italy, where gender stereotypes are deeply rooted due to historical and cultural reasons, which are also reflected in the absence in Italy of laws in support of sexual minorities. The aim of inclusion is to embrace uh, all people irrespective to, of uh, race, gender, disability, medical or other needs. It's about giving equal access and opportunities and getting rid of discrimination and intolerance. It affects all aspects of public life. What does inclusion mean? Exclusion, segregation, integration and inclusion can be used in the same context, but their meaning is uh, different. The exclusion starts from the idea that uh, there are normal people and others who are not. Consequently, people with functional diversity are left, uh, are left out of society, but not considering themselves normal. Segregate means separate. Separate someone from something or one thing from uh, another. In this way, it excludes and separates group 
such as uh, women, racial minorities, religious minorities, and people with disabilities from the rest of the popula population, with uh, arguments of uh, sexual, racial, religious, uh, uh, or ideological nature and uh, sexual, uh, religious uh, uh, stigma. Integration, the idea of normality is maintained, but it is considered that people who manage to adapt will be considered part of society. Inclusion is associated with the ability of people to accept the other and live in harmony, accepting the differences. Inclusion does not focus on the dis disabilities or diagnosis of the people. It focuses on your capabilities. It is based on the principles of fairness and cooperation. Inclusion accepts everyone as they are recognizing each person's individual characteristics without trying to bring them closer to a normalized model of being, thinking and acting. Diversity is uh, understood as normality, as normal. Synapsy, so, Synapsy is uh, the center of uh, promotion, uh, equality and social uh, inclusion, uh, in particular the anti-discrimination and the culture of differences uh, as the objective to promote well-being and health of all those who belong to academic community with a specific focus on fighting and preventing discrimination related to gender identity and sexual orientation to providing direct help and support to those who are experiencing difficulties related to gender and sexual stigma. Uh, our uh, um, main aim is to improve the awareness of all students and staff on issues related to sexual minorities through activities that uh, aim both to disseminate uh, a correct knowledge of the construct of sexual identities and to promote to use um, of our respectful and inclusive languages by the entire academic community. Uh, the anti-discrimination section of to, to the students a series of activities to develop a culture of differences in our university awareness training informational psychological counseling advice to organization uh, permanent observatory Mm, for example, permanent observatory monitors a campus climate to promote equality opportunities for all students and uh, identify exclusion phenomena. Uh, our, uh, in general, researcher shows that higher education institutions generally hostile environments uh, for LGBT students, and uh, we uh, try to prevent this uh, phenomena and um, the campus uh, climate. The campus climate is the cumulative attitudes behaviors and standards of employees and students concerning access for inclusion of for in, 
for inclusion of and the level of respect for individual and the group needs, abilities and the potential and the campus climates interfere with the successful college experience and identify development. Um, while academia is writing about gender and LGBT plus topics, gender and sexual orientation studies and the paper on inclusion in higher education doesn't exist. And uh, we try to promote uh, instrumental uh, for university and uh, Xenia project, our project, um, our experiences, our experiences of synapsy in promoting social inclusion and activity participation is, will inspire the, inspired the whole process of Xenia, starting from the definition of macro areas and indicator of the index, passing through the implementation and evaluation of the index until contributing to its upscaling and dissemination. Senia in uh, ancient Greek represented the sacred value of hospitality and the respect between guest and host, making them part of the context they choose to visit and to cross and to try to best satisfy their guest. Xenia, Xenia project originates from the need to address a paradox and um, uh, we, we want to map and assess how higher education are inclusive, scoring them against a set of of objective indicators, gauge the perception of students and staff of how inclusive, inclusive area education institution and identify key areas for intervention. We uh, individuated four dimension to promote the inclusiveness index, institutional, policy and programs, pedagogy and academics, and academic life and support services. Each dimension is uh, have a set of item of uh, matrix and uh, survey. Um, for indica objective indicators and the perception of uh, students. Okay, Maura, if you want. Uh, yes, continue. thank you, Annalisa. So, uh, as you have seen, uh, we um, our our center is engaged also in many projects. So we are not in the status. Um, uh, the status of our center is a uh, articulated status because uh, we are not uh, only providing services to the students, but there is also uh, a research area that we developed develop according to different uh, uh, research lines. So, uh, and also we are engaged into uh, European founded projects, many European founded projects. So our commitment is a commitment uh, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, uh, also focused on the development of a, a cultural frame uh, within uh, the university, but also outside. For example, we work with the schools and uh, one of the things that Annalisa didn't mention is that they are actively uh, engaged with schools. So they do seminars and workshops within the schools, uh, Italian uh, Neapolitan high schools uh, and Italian high schools uh, and also junior high schools. 
because uh, this uh, issue of gender is an issue raising very early also in the in the life of, or in the life of, of the of, of the youth for example yesterday i had a meeting with uh, some uh, the junior high school teachers and one of the, the teachers asked us uh, uh, to have um, uh, a meeting a cons consulting meeting because in her class uh, she has two uh, young uh, boys who are um, uh, discovering that their uh, their gender identity but their families are uh, do not agree you know the families are oppositive to this and so uh, she she uh, poses this question she posed this question within our meeting and uh, she will be contacted by by the, um, uh, uh, the section uh, run and uh, coordinated by Annalisa so um, we are very much enga engaged also in what we called in Italy we call third mission of the university i don't know if uh, in uh, europe there is also this um this awareness okay because our universities are evaluated on three missions the first mission is uh, teaching and learning and so, so supporting the uh, the the education of the students and learning of the students second mission is research and so we are we develop develop in we try to develop um, research in very in different areas but the third mission is the engagement of the university uh, to develop uh, the um, local territorial area and to support uh, at uh, at a local and also at the broader level at the national level the um, uh, the, the citizens, uh, uh, students in the high school, or and also, for example, we work a lot on professional development for for teachers, for example, or for other kind of pro professionals. So this is uh, uh, our area of engagement. And so, as a Synapsy Center, we do a lot of work with our students. So we provide services, and later I will show you. Uh, the different services. I, how can I um, present? You can just click on the on the files below uh, the presentation. Okay, I click on the I click on the there, there is an action. Okay. The arrows. Okay, and I can share. Uh, what, what can I, I can uh, can share a, vi a, sh a video or can I share? Uh, yeah. Uh, below the presentation, there should be uh, two buttons with uh, arrows pointing left and right. Maybe Annalisa has to do it. Uh, no, okay, Annalisa. No, no. Oh. Mm, okay. I I want to show you the website, our website. I try. Let me. Oh, okay. Ah. So maybe Annalisa can do it for uh, for me. Can you share the website of the Snapseed English version? No. Um, let me. Do you want to try again, Annalisa? I, I made you. Can you, can you just send, uh, put the link into the chat? Is that possible? Okay, I put the link into the chat. Okay. No, but, then, just, uh, but then it can't be seen from, from in, on the stream. No, but maybe okay. see the chat. Maybe Alex or Christian can help us. But uh, Annalisa, can you see the arrows, the the buttons with the arrows, like you did before? So here is the chat. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, here's the, the chat, the public chat, right? Okay. So I put the li link in the chat, and everybody can no. see. It. No. Okay. No, but, uh... Sorry, I'm a mute. Uh, okay. Okay. So can you see the, the the link? I put it in the chat, right? Um. Yeah, we can we can see it here in this room, but um. Oh no! It's wait, wait, wait. What's happening? Something else is happening now. <laughs> Apology. Sharing the screen. I shared the website. Oh, okay. great. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, our center uh, is a center for um, to promote the active and participatory inclusion of the students. And um, Annalisa has explained before what we mean for inclusion. Inclusion means uh, uh, that the individuals and the context to, together evolve and change 
and promote uh, something different um, that uh, um, is possible um, since we acknowledge and uh, uh, and see so we have a, a particular way of looking at all the differences which are in uh, in our um, in our university and uh, in, so looking at all the differences that we can detect within our university we've been growing so the synapse center um, has um, 11 years right now we celebrated two years ago we celebrated our uh, anniversary and uh, so we've been growing um, uh, developing different services and uh, different sections according to what we've been looking at uh, in the development of our university. And uh, that's why we provide services to support, for example, students uh, who are in, uh, okay, this one, thank you, uh, who um, are in a condition of disability because uh, our perspective is that disability is not something connected to the person it's not uh, some uh, a property of the person disability is, some, is something emerging from the interaction of the person with the environment so uh, if uh, um, so we look at the conditions they make disability be there within the university uh, context if we provide for example to the to the to our students uh, tools and uh, accommodations uh, that uh, they can use to learn better to live better um, disability is not there anymore so uh, it's uh, our uh, understanding of disability is that uh, disability is something that is connected to the uh, relationship with the environment. That's why we try to um, uh, reduce all and to uh, remove all the obstacles uh, that limit the active participation of the students to university life. Uh, we detect, for example, uh, um, physical barriers, but also uh, we try to overcome cultural barriers which are very common uh, among, among students, but mainly among teachers, among professors. So one of the main uh, uh, tasks that we uh, perform is the task to uh, interact with uh, prof university professors, uh, with our staff. We have, a st uh, we have an interdisciplinary staff, which is composed of uh, psychologists of course uh, educational counselors and uh, engineers who can support the students with technological facilities and so uh, as i told you one of the, our main challenges is to uh, talk with the uh, university professors and show them that with the, um, the tools and the uh, um, devices that we uh, provide to the students. The, the students can um, successfully arrive to complete their uh, uh, their learning path and, and their uh, university uh, and achieve the university degree. And so the disability services are services uh, which uh, um, accompany the students. Each student has a personalized project which changes every year. So, so every year uh, um, the students maybe can um, ask to have more or less support, can ask to have some devices or to uh, reduce the devices because uh, he's, he's becoming more autonomous. So we personalize our intervention according to the different uh, necessities and um, uh, requirements of the students uh, and uh, in relation with their learning context. And uh, of course, uh, we, um, we have a growing number of students who uh, um, ask to have support because they have learning disorders. So dyslexia, for example, uh, for example, is very common. And uh, also for this kind of students, we provide uh, personalized uh, um, interventions and um, educational, in particular, educational uh, counseling. And uh, 
our our staff uh, works uh, supporting the students uh, during their uh, learning path with different uh, activities but also um, many students uh, who uh, do not uh, ask to have some specific support uh, due to a condition of disability or due to a learning disorder. Um, uh, ask to have a broader support, psychological support. Because the students, uh, many students, for example, um, are, cannot keep the pace of the, of the learning. Okay. So many students, for example, uh, are late with the exams. Uh, some students uh, uh, feel uh, distressed. In particular, we have been, uh, um, during the pandemic period, many students have um, developed um, uh, anxiety and uh, depression. So many students ask for a specific psychological support which is not connected to learning difficulties or conditions of disability and so we provide the uh, a kind of services a wide uh, range of services which we which we call uh, services to um, support the success successful training of the students uh, so students should uh, be successful in their university life and then they, um, they participate, for example, to workshop uh, with other students regarding the anxiety to, um, uh, to, our, uh, to be engaged in, a examin in the examination or the anxiety to, be, uh, to follow the pace of the, and the rhythm, rhythm of the university studies. Or, for, for example, some students are um, are, um, show some um, distress for some uh, reasons uh, connected to their personal life. And so we provide psychological support. We provide um, a series of meetings with students, four uh, meetings plus other four meetings to support them. So as you can see, we try to um, uh, follow uh, the students uh, from the beginning, uh, so since they enter the university path uh, until they uh, graduate and until they uh, look out um, at, uh, so they, they try to look in, into the world outside and try to see uh, what will be their future life, for example, as a worker. And uh, in order to um, accompany students in this process, uh, we provide uh, these other services, which are services to, for the promotion of, of employability. Employability is not um, a, a, in, uh, the idea uh, that uh, uh, you, you, you find a job, but employability is a complex uh, construct which uh, refers to the internal resources of the individual and the external resources of the, the, the individual. For example, how, um, which is uh, uh, the reference network that you have to find a job? Are you able uh, to uh, move around? Um, are you flexible enough? which are the soft skills that you have uh, that, ca that can support you in finding and maintaining a good job. So many students, uh, uh, for example, they come, they finish the university, they have also um, a high score in their graduation, but, may, but they're not able to work in group or they're not able, for example, to, uh, to plan their future life. So we work with the students to identify their potential of employability. Are you employable? What, what, what is your potential? And, and we organize workshops with students from different uh, uh, university courses to support and to promote their employability. Also, we have uh, an help desk 
or in the individual at risk. For example, if the students want to be supported uh, in the application for a, for a job. And uh, we help the students to um, develop a narrative which becomes a video curriculum. So uh, we support them also in the recording of the video curriculum. We have a special spot to do it. And so the students uh, at the end of the process the, uh, have this uh, uh, tool, which is a video constructed uh, in order to uh, meet the requirements of the job market. So as you can see, we try to support the students uh, in different uh, areas. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, students, uh, we graduate a lot of students with disabilities. And for them, it is more difficult than for from other students to, to find a job. So we provide also a job placement uh, service for uh, uh, students uh, uh, who uh, have uh, who graduate students with um, who graduate and they uh, maybe can find uh, different uh, uh, more difficulties in look, looking for a job but due to the condition of disability that they may encounter in the job place so we work also in supporting uh, the uh, students for this uh, uh, when they uh, when they ask this and uh, we, as I told you before, we are uh, we offer services, but also we are engaged in many projects, European projects. We have a curriculum of, ma of many European projects, and Annalisa is one of the of the uh, colleagues who, who uh, is contributing uh, uh, to uh, implement our curriculum because we have a lot of. Uh, uh, Oh, a lot of projects running on and um, we are uh, also we host in our within our uh, university uh, the national civil service which is uh, the opportunity for um, uh, young uh, university students but also um, people who just come from the house uh, out from the out, high school or people who are not engaged in university pathways to uh, spend one year uh, uh, with us and uh, these 50 young people uh, are engaged in now in all our services in all our activities in all our projects and they make a very relevant experience for their future, for their curriculum. And it happens that many people who did uh, this, um, who participated to the National Civil Service with us, for example, come back to us. Some of them work with us uh, in our staff uh, because they, they have developed the, the, some skills that are useful for them and that we, and we acknowledge the, the value, uh, value of uh, their skills. And um, as I told you also before, we do a lot of research in different areas, disability studies. Uh, we recently hosted a seminar, in, an international seminar with some um, colleagues on uh, disability, uh, in the philosophy of disability and uh, gender LGBT studies and gender studies. Um, uh, Oh, adult learning and um, job placement uh, studies and research. And we also are connected to different uh, realities. We, are, we, are, uh, we network a lot. For example, we have, uh, we have a lot of uh, connections with uh, uh, associations. Uh, Annalisa can mention many uh, of the networks that we have with the several associations, LGBT associations at the national or international level. And with also research institutes, for example, we have an agreement with a, a National Research Institute for Public Policies because we uh, try to develop um, projects and uh, research that are valuable um, uh, on a also on a cultural and a most uh, most of all political base because we we are uh, we have this ambition to promote a culture of inclusion 
and to be and so to support so also the development development of uh, uh, inclusive policies within the university and also uh, within uh, our uh, region and in our nation but i'm here for for questions if you you, uh, Excellent. Yes. Thank you so much to both of you uh, for these insights into your work in uh, Naples. Actually, I, I just looked it up um, and learned that uh, I think your university is one of the biggest in Italy, right? Yes. We are talking about almost 80,000 students. Um, that's uh, maybe almost three times the number we have in Innsbruck. Um, so I'm just wondering with, with this, you know, talking about synapse uh, and talking about the reality you're working in, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about resources. I mean, how many, how many colleagues do you have working there addressing the needs of so many um, students? Is that in a, do you know what I mean? Is it in a good balance? I mean, do you, can you really handle uh, such okay, a Okay, we 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 are needs? okay. We are flexible, so we have a permanent staff, which is staff uh, of people who work at the university and uh, are a part of the university uh, staff. But also, we uh, for some reason, if if we for some reason need some specialists or some more resources. We can, for example, uh, uh, recruit other people with different in different forms, scholarships, uh, or for example, we uh, are connected to uh, some um, uh, association or organization which provides specific services and specific professional uh, uh, activities. Or, for example, we, um, if we need to implement our research area, uh, we, um, uh, we have uh, uh, the possibility to hire people who do research with us. So we are flexible because we, uh, according to what we need, we hire people for one month, one year, it depends. Two years, it depends. Okay. Um... Okay, do you want to go on? Yeah, I, I mean, thank you. Uh, thank you from, from my side as well. I was, uh, uh, I was thinking along the same lines of what a great service, what a fantastic offer to all the students and how, how do you deal with it? I mean, you would, um, and, and, and that the fact that you're being, you, you have the uh, budget to be flexible. I mean, that's also, you need, you yeah. need to have, you need to be, you have the fundings to, to do that. That's, uh, I think it's a very clear gesture and I think it's, uh, no, it's, 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 it's a great offer that you do. And I was particularly curious about um, the, and, and I can see that in the chat, there's also a, a question about your, uh, the, the services you offer. Um, and I would I would combine my question with the question in the chat. Um, the the chat training. training. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you let, 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 tell us a little bit more about the awareness training? Uh, and I I would be curious about the employability services that you yes. have because I think that's a great idea. And maybe you can be. I mean, the job video is one um, one uh, 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 a topic there. But maybe you can tell us a little bit more what you actually do. How do you what do you offer? So maybe Annalisa can ask about the awareness because it's something much more connected to the psychological areas and I can ask her about the uh, employee beauty services. Yes, the, the our activities are exper uh, experiential workshop of three workshops or um, uh, role play on role playing uh, uh, or theoretical experiential seminars on the topics of gender and sexual orientation differences or uh, discrimination. But uh, our proposal is experiential uh, proposal. And these are for students and uh, staff, faculty? Students, students, particular students. Also, one thing that Annalisa didn't, didn't mention is that we work a lot with, together with student associations. So mm -hmm. all our services <laughs> are 
implemented according to the request and a constant engagement with student associations. And also yes. there is in the board of the center, there is one uh, rep rep representative of the students. But you're really focusing exclusively on the students in the center. It's not, it doesn't also include um, questions of uh, equality, discrimination, and so on when it comes to faculty uh, members. Uh, that, that's, that, that is somehow dealt with in a, in a different uh, section or organization or center? No, or in a, because it is something that uh, uh, is part of the um, institutional um, services. So there is a, 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 a team which is called uh, Kug. Uh, it's in it, it, it's a, a, a team which uh, uh, deals with all the problems related to gender issues, but for all the people and professors in uh, in the university. So we are connected with uh, with uh, this uh, this team. Uh, the, the, but uh, and uh, so um, the, they uh, we are consultant for the, in particular when there are some issues regarding I don't know uh, um, stig gender stigma or transsexual students one other things that or or also issues of transgenderism with, with among the the university staff. Okay, but uh, there, this is uh, some uh, um, structure for all the Ateneum uh, with the elected members and uh, uh, um, so they are the, they are what the Ateneum provides for, for uh, to all of us. We are connected with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the employability? About the employability, okay, we um, have uh, this uh, a staff which is composed right now by um, a, a, an ad expert in adult education and a developmental psychologist uh, who is uh, a, an expert on vocational, um, vocational uh, um, uh, training and vocational issues and uh, another clinical psychologist but now uh, but uh, and we uh, for the disability um, job employment uh, uh, there is another uh, psychologist who takes care of in particular of the um, uh, graduate students with disabilities we uh, organize our work in, in this way students uh, um, apply uh, uh, okay we at the end we um, we introduce our services to all the students uh, uh, who are uh, completing their path. So we go into the uh, classrooms or uh, actually in the last year we've been doing a lot of virtual <laughs> meeting with all the students. Then we offer to the students some specific labs. And it is interesting to work on, on, a, um, on the basis of a, a heterogeneity. So students from different uh, degree courses, medicine, uh, law, because it's, it's very interesting to have the di different perspectives on, on their future. And we use uh, uh, some tools, uh, which one tool is a um, questionnaire, which has been developed uh, by the Institute for Public Policies, which is called AVO. And it's a questionnaire which measures the level of employability potential of the students. After this, we um, uh, explain to the students which is the, the level of employability potential and which are the areas that are weak and they should work on. And uh, once we have identified this area, we provide uh, to the students mm -hmm. different tools and uh, activities to support them, them in the development of this, this weak areas and so we have workshops with them um, we also as i told you have an individual consultancy and also we um, uh, uh, have um, sessions which um, simulate uh, the, um, um, the a meeting that you have for example with with an hr in the who, who is hiring you okay so we simulate uh, 
the, the possibility uh, uh, that uh, that you enter for example you 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 are you are willing to be hard into to a firm and so there is this person who uh, who is uh, asking you questions and you should be you know uh, responsive to these questions so we make simulations role playing okay regarding this uh, and and then also we support the students in the writing the curriculum for example not many students are able to write the european cb version of the curriculum and so they are supported in writing the european cb version and also they uh, they write narratives and storyboards for their um, video cb but also we use a lot of uh, autobiographical and narrative um, activities because we support them in, uh, in talking about their life, their story, and so we use a lot of narratives. And we use another tool which is called um, competencies assessment tool. So together with the students, we try to assess which competencies they have developed after the during the university period and which competencies they should work on they should develop in particular we focus on soft skills which are the most weak i don't know if i have answer answer to, to your question we have um, uh, one or two more questions in the chat. The first is going back to the awareness training. Um, uh, I just saw that, that there's a, a sort of a deepening uh, only awareness raising or also some something else. I mean, I, I suppose uh, I mean, you cover a whole range of, uh, of offers uh, to students. So there is um, awareness training, but there's I'm sure there is a, a lot more um, uh, than that. I mean, I think the uh, yes. ability Yes, there is an awareness. Uh, is awareness is also on, for example, um, your capacity to address stress, mm -hmm. or your capacity to uh, manage your time. Mm -hmm. So many workshops are connected also to, or to these issues because many students, for example, they learn to study and to organize their time when they are in the high school. But the high school is a protected place, okay? When you arrive at the university, you have to do it on your own. And they lose the, the coordinates, the time coordinates. So they should uh, be uh, supported in uh, organizing their time frame, which is not common. Yeah, I can relate to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another question from the chat is, uh, what exactly are you doing about discrimination issues? This is for Annalisa. <laughs> this is for Annalisa. We try to improve uh, the quality of uh, campus climate to fight uh, uh, discrimination uh, based uh, sexual and gender stigma. Um, um, to fight uh, the phenomena of uh, microaggressions um, uh, based uh, uh, homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, uh, violent, gender uh, violence uh, um, against women and uh, LGBT plus uh, students. Um, the mission is the campus climate, the organization, the dimension of a higher education institution. Because uh, uh, a good campus climate is a good uh, um, uh, um, uh, academy performance, uh, uh, well being, uh, um, and uh, we work. Uh, on campus climate, uh, a different dimension of campus climate. Also, Annalisa didn't mention that we are um, also engaged in what we uh, in the welcome international welcoming board of uh, you, uh, of the university. So, a member of Synapsi, a, sta a, a, a small staff of uh, the Synapsi Center, is engaged also in the welcoming board uh, for all the foreign students. So, we have a lot of uh, students coming from 
uh, different countries and we uh, have a lot of PhD students who come from uh, abroad and we um, develop a program which is called uh, Wellbeing in Naples. So we support the students uh, and uh, we welcome them, we support the students, uh, we offer also psychological uh, consultancy <laughs> for the foreign students. Uh, in particular during this pandemic period, it, it is it has been terrible because they come from abroad and they are just, you know, uh, close within the, the houses. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I presume that's that's a whole different issue that we will pro probably address over the next decades or so. That um, yeah. uh, what we experienced over the last two years and um, how we can also have an what 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 does it mean to have inclusion online um how how can yes. you deal with this in, in in a digital world i think that's something where we are just yeah. at the beginning to understand the issues yes we uh, for example many of our services uh, uh, the psychological services but also the educational consulting services we move them online and so we are discovering many possibilities but also uh, we are losing the face-to-face -face interaction so it's something complex. We are still uh, trying to reflect on it. Um, see, uh, I remember you said um, earlier that it's, it's, uh, your, your business is about removing all barriers yes. for the students. And uh, um, I mean, especially talking now about digital services and all that, and it's... Uh, so I'm just wondering, how do you make sure that there are no barriers there for entering the synapse? You know what I mean? That it's so that, yes. that everybody knows about this center inside the university. All students know when okay. they can go there, what they can expect Good there. Question. And that it's really easy to okay. access because sometimes I have the feeling we have these institutions inside our huge university settings and sometimes students uh, don't know that something yes. like that exists and that they can go there with all these uh, yes, um, yes. problems and, and questions. Good question. We have two uh, members of the staff. One is uh, an, an engineer and he takes, a, takes care that all the materials and all the websites and web pages of all, for all the universities are accessible because you know there is a law according accessibility of the website and the, on also of the learning materials and we can take care of this and the, another uh, member of our staff is the is the coordinator of the communication services so we have for example uh, we have the website of course we have the um, facebook page and we uh, pro we provide the news and we organize the, the events and we spread the, new, the news regarding the events so there is a, 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 a coordinator um, of the this uh, activities and also he's the one who supports us in doing promotional videos and so on so we try to also be um, to communicate uh, mm -hmm. our our presence with different uh, uh, events and also different messages all around. And if you see uh, on our, our website, there is a section called uh, "What People Tell About Us." Okay, and uh, we collect and uh, we update uh, all the. Uh, it, uh, of course, we uh, if the students agree that we publish, okay, uh, with uh, and in uh, in anonymous way what they they've told. Many students, for example, send us letters thanking us for our support, or for example, it happened that uh, because also uh, we support uh, um, students for, um, engaged in all the programs in our university and so we uh, we are uh, we have degree courses but also we have this uh, uh, structure which is called academy structures so for example we do um, uh, we are connected for example with apple and apple as a, an academy uh, which for uh, developers of apps 
So it's not a degree course. It's an academy which lasts one year and the students have this developing some specific skills. And some of them are hired by the Apple or other companies. Okay, so we have this uh, also this uh, learning structure, uh, the system of academies. Okay. And also we support the students with specific dedicated projects who are in the uh, academy networks. And uh, once it happens, and students coming from all over the world. So uh, one uh, couple of years ago, we had the students coming from um, England, uh very brilliant um, uh, he, he had a, was in the autistic spectrum and he had a, um, also the dyslexia and uh, difficulties uh, in the hearing and so we supported him uh, and uh, and uh, also we have uh, we we have a, a lot of uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, situations okay that uh, um, uh, that we uh, take care for, um, for. Can I also just ask, I've been looking at this slide now for some time and reading through it. And uh, if I remember correctly, it goes back to a research project you did with other universities from different uh, countries. Annalisa, yes. The Xenia project. Uh, and, um, and, 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 and founded project. And so these are the questions that you would ask. Uh, you had asked uh, the, the different universities, um, to, uh, because I'm I'm interested in the in this comparative approach. I mean, can you say something? How if if there's um, what are the differences? How an Irish university, say, or an Italian university, would address these questions? The Xenia um, to uh, want to improve the index for all university, European university, and uh, the index um, has uh, the items for all university, uh, Italian, English, uh, uh, French, uh, um, all university and the dimension is the general dimension universal dimension but i also understood that there is a considerable part of monitoring uh in yes. senior is that right so monitoring this what you always call uh, campus climate um, yes can you say something about the yes the different campus climates when it comes to these uh different countries part and universities participating in uh, in in Xenia in the network so are there specific i don't know are there specific challenges or discriminations or whatever uh, in 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 this country compared to another country or this university compared to another university are there is there a pattern or is that more or less the same wherever you look at but the index is a uh is general and uh, we improve the index uh, the algorithm to uh, improve the inclusion for the uh, five dimension but uh, the, the general non specific countries and also in the in the findings when you do the monitoring there is there are no specific specificities in the different countries you compare? No, because uh, we um, must to create index for university. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So the project is uh, implementing this tool. The, the yeah. measure. They, they, measure. They, they, they are the not index. collecting data. The, the project oh. is implementing this tool and after the tool has been implemented and validated, they will collect the data. But uh, at the moment, the project is only developing this tool. It, ah, it's it's okay. a self-assessment tool for the universities. I see, okay. Okay. Do we have other questions coming from the chat? Not for the moment. 
I was also interested in the, because you talked about the third mission, and of course we know something yes. about third mission in Austria as well. Um, I think it's uh, it's a topic in all European countries. Yes. I guess. Um, but you said specifically that you work together with schools. Yes, a lot. And that's always a challenge, of course. As I think, as we know, we, you know, universities collaborating with schools, but there's also a lot of potential in it. Can you tell us yes. a little bit more about that? You know, so so as far as I understood it, you you offer them programs and workshops and courses for the yes. for this for the teachers or for the, teachers. for the classes and the students or uh, we uh, for, we offer um, uh, in particular for the for the teachers we offer um, programs and activities uh, on uh, inclusion issues uh, so uh, how to promote an inclusive school how, how to uh, promote an inclusive classroom and um, we train um, a big, big number of, of teachers. Uh, at the moment, we are engaged in a, in a activity, uh, and uh, we are training 2,000 uh, teachers online. Mm -hmm. With several, uh, there are, we have uh, we run in parallel uh, several uh, classes with with a team of people, you know. Uh, connected to this project. But also, as Annalisa said, maybe, maybe Annalisa can tell more, uh, the anti-discrimination section works with high school students in order mm -hmm. to promote uh, awareness on uh, um, uh, discrimination issues. So they do a lot of work, not, not only with, uh, with the teachers, but with the students to prevent um, homophobic bullying, cyberbullying, hate speech, uh, um, hate crimes in school mm -hmm. with adolescents in particular. Well, I'm very, very impressed with uh, sort of the range of, uh, um, of, of activities and services you offer. I mean, I will, we can only imagine how much <laughs> Uh, men and women power that that would take and uh, it's it's uh, it's very um it's it's a very impressive um ag agenda that you have thank you thank you so um there are no more questions coming from the chat maybe that's it for today okay um it was really a pleasure to have you extremely well, interesting well. Hopefully, we can meet in person one time in uh, Naples. We wait you in Naples. We wait for you in Naples. Yes. And um, uh, next week, no, it's not next week. No, of course not, because next, <laughs> next week is week. Really almost, almost holidays. No, it's in the new year, as yes. Cynthia already said at the very beginning. So we are only back on January 12th. Um, and then we have uh, our very own Alexandra Weiss and Sabine Engel from our working committee on equal opportunity issues and our gender studies office yeah. at the University of Innsbruck. Uh, maybe also interesting to compare another model of dealing with these uh, issues that you have just um, addressed, yes. maybe focusing on other Challenges, Great. but it's also very interesting how, and this is what we figured out here, I think, over the last weeks and months, how all the different uh, universities in the different countries um, deal with that also institutionally, you know, they yes. institutionalize or institutionally address these issues. So, so this brings us back um, uh, to our Austrian in Innsbruck model, and they will talk about doing diversity at the new University of Innsbruck from theory to practice. So that's January the 12th. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we can only wish you uh, uh, nice and relaxing uh, holidays. Um, whatever you do, enjoy it. Uh, Thank you. Stay safe and uh, healthy. I think that's still most important in these days. Um, and uh, have a great start of the new year. You too. Okay. Thank Last you so much. Thank you. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Annalisa. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Um,